Welcome to section 34 of viruses. This is our overview figure showing the viruses that you need to know. In this section, we'll be discussing the Ebola and the Marburg viruses. Our story takes place in a bowling alley that has been devastated by the zombie apocalypse. You can see blood everywhere. These are sad times. Well, this bowling alley is owned by, or at least was owned by, a Miss Marburg. You can see the logo in the back. Marburg's bowling alley. Miss Marburg's name represents the Marburg virus, and it's a bowling alley, which represents Ebola. Bowling, Ebola. Near the beginning of the zombie apocalypse, before her own bowling alley was attacked, Miss Marburg started logging and writing down all she knew about zombies. She kept all her files in this box labeled zombie files. Although Miss Marburg is no longer with us, the files she created will be very useful to the survivors who wish to combat these zombies. In any case, this box of zombie files represents the Phyloviridae family, to which Marburg and Ebola belong. So again, zombie files for phyloviruses. On the left, you can see the wall is broken down, exposing the alley to the harsh elements outside. See these dark ominous clouds? The negative feeling you get when you see those negative clouds represents that this is a negative sense virus. Negative clouds for negative sense. Although the scene is kind of sad, there are lots of warm colors seen throughout. Lots of reds and yellows and such. Look at those nice halogen lights with the warm glow they bring. Even Marburg's sign is full of warm colors. But the point is, these red warm colors indicate that this is an RNA virus. Red warm color scheme for RNA virus. I put off the gore and mayhem long enough. So let's bring in our first zombie. Look at him crawling across the floor. So creepy. And sad. Don't feel bad for this creature anymore though. He's already dead. Just a zombie now. Look at all that blood dripping from him. It's even coming out his eyes. It's disgusting. This diffusely dripping blood represents the diffuse hemorrhage that often accompanies an infection with the Ebola virus or the Marburg virus. So you can imagine that these are devastating viruses causing all that hemorrhaging. Now this zombie has been crawling for days in search for some food. And it looks like he crawled up through that dark pit where the pins get knocked into. You can see that long line of nasty blood trailing his hemorrhaging body. This long line of blood will help you remember that Ebola and Marburg are linear viruses. So long line of blood for linear virus. Now look at this poor guy, still alive and caught in the fray of a zombie apocalypse. I guess our zombie back there did actually spot some food. Anyways, our living human here is just trying to eat some jello packets. It's all it could scrounge up. Jello starts out as a liquid, just like blood, but then it congeals into a solid. The left image shows red blood jello in its liquid form. Then it coagulates into a solid, which you can then cut up into little cubes. Little blood red cubes if you want. You can see that on the right image. So this jello that our hungry human is trying to eat represents diffuse intravascular coagulation or DIC. It makes sense that patients with an Ebola or Marburg infection would get DIC. If they are hemorrhaging diffusely, as represented by our hemorrhaging and bloody zombie crawling on the floor, then the coagulating processes will run rampant in the blood, leading to blood clots throughout the body. With all of that coagulation, clotting factors will be used up, making it more difficult for blood to repair damaged walls. What does this mean for the patient? More hemorrhaging. It's a vicious cycle between clotting and hemorrhaging. This cycle is best known as DIC. Again, coagulated jello stands for diffuse coagulation, DIC. Well, as this fellow lifted his cup of coagulated gelatin, he pulled a muscle in his arm. You can see him reach for his new injury, grunting in pain. Poor guy can't catch a break. Maybe his arms are just weak from hunger. In any case, this pulled and now painful muscle in his arm will help you remember myalgias in Ebola and Marburg infections. Again, pulled muscle for myalgias. Now look to this poor guy near the sink. It looks like he got shocked and burned to a crisp. Based on the toaster in the sink and the char marks surrounding the outlet, I'd say the poor guy was electrocuted to death. That's awful. But maybe getting shocked to death is better than getting eaten alive by zombies. Well, this shocked to death body here represents shock. In Ebola and Marburg, the infection along with the blood loss can lead to shock. Again, shock to death guy stands for shock. Not all the symptoms of Ebola and Marburg are as terrifying as shock, hemorrhage, and DIC. In fact, it's more likely that patients will get a fever, which was represented by all these heat lamps. These heat lamps come in handy in case they go without power for any length of time. Again, heat lamps for fever. The most common presenting symptoms are really flu-like symptoms. See this poor guy here on the floor? Sick as can be. He has a wet washcloth on his forehead and everything. He looks really uncomfortable. Well, this super sick man on the floor next to the fever lamp represents the flu-like symptoms that predominate Ebola and Marburg infections. So in addition to fever, you can think of the chills, malaise, and maybe even a sore throat. The things you think of when you think of flu-like illnesses. Now some monkeys climbed through the broken wall and started eating bugs off this dead guy. There's no death with dignity during a zombie apocalypse. Well, the apes eating from this lifeless body represent the fact that Marburg and Ebola can spread via dead bodies, or fomites, as well as apes and monkeys. 
So when you think of apes eating off this dead man, you will remember that apes and dead bodies can transmit infectious particles. Now it looks like a healthcare worker came into the alley to help any victims who are still alive. Unfortunately, he stepped in some nasty watery stool in his way in. That's disgusting. The nasty stool and the blood he was thoughtlessly traipsing through on his way in represent the fact that Ebola and Marburg viruses can be transmitted via direct contact with bodily fluids of infected people. Again, walking through bodily fluids for transmission through bodily fluids. So walking through this bodily fluid pile here is so gross. So gross, in fact, that this guy started to throw up. You can see it escaping his hands. Yikes. Well, this revolting part of our story represents the diarrhea and vomiting that come with an Ebola and Marburg infection. So again, stepping in diarrhea and then vomiting stands for diarrhea and vomiting. Now, this poor worker really should have been wearing personal protective equipment. Like this worker, for example. Look at her with all that fully donned personal protective equipment, or PPE. This is super important to remember. Since Ebola and Marburg are spread via contact with bodily fluids, healthcare workers must be absolutely vigilant about wearing personal protective equipment. This worker is an excellent example. Again, this healthcare worker wearing PPE will help you remember just how important it is to wear PPE when treating Ebola or Marburg patients. Now because this worker is fully protected, she is able to offer support to this poor struggling man. She has brought him some water for support. Since water is practically universal and needed for nearly any type of illness, especially when treatment is just supportive, we use water bottles or water jugs to represent supportive treatment. And supportive treatment is, quite frankly, the only thing you can do to treat Ebola and Marburg infections. There is no cure for zombieism, and there is no cure for Ebola and Marburg. So again, just offer supportive care while the patient fights off the virus. Now here's one last zombie for our creepy story. This zombie was caught by the humans early during the apocalypse, and Miss Marburg had the good sense to chain him up. Look at those three chains strapping him back. Thankfully, those three chains are preventing this poor feverish man on the ground from getting eaten alive. Anyways, these three chains represent the fact that you can diagnose Ebola and Marburg viruses using polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. So chains on a zombie for polymerase chain reaction. So now that we've covered everything in the image, let's do a question to apply what you learned. A 35-year-old African-American female presents to the emergency department due to concerns that she is infected with the Ebola virus. She recently traveled to Sierra Leone to visit extended family and returned one week ago. Since returning to the United States, she learned that there was an outbreak of Ebola in the town she visited. She now reports a fever, muscle aches, and several episodes of emesis over the past 24 hours. If she is infected with the Ebola virus, which of the following is most likely true? A. Antiviral medication may reduce the duration of her illness. B. PCR will confirm the diagnosis, C, she had sexual contact with an infected person, or D, she should go home immediately and minimize her contact with other people. So we're thinking about an Ebola virus, so the correct answer is B, you will confirm infection with PCR. Remember that zombie with the three chains. This represents polymerase chain reaction. Now A is wrong because antiviral medications will not help. The only treatment you can offer these patients is supportive care. And C is wrong because Ebola and Marburg are not sexually transmitted. They are transmitted through bodily fluids or fomites, apes and dead bodies. Now, could someone transmit the infection during a sexual encounter? Probably. But transmission is far more likely achieved through another means. And lastly, D is wrong because the patient won't be set home until the infection is controlled. In fact, Ebola-infected people are quarantined and all healthcare workers must use personal protective equipment with each encounter with the patient, as we discussed before. And with that, you've learned all that you need to know for Ebola and Marburg viruses.